Kamora of Silicon Valley High School. Welcome to our fifth video. In this video, we will talk about event handling techniques. So in the first three videos, we've discussed how GUI works. And on our fourth video, we created a GUI-based calculator. But that calculator doesn't have any functionalities yet. The functionalities that we are uh, that we aim to implement in our calculator GUI is called event handling. So before we proceed on how to code event handling techniques or event handling codes, let's define what events are. Events are objects in Java that describes what happened. So if you are if you have a GUI component, let's say, let's take a look or let's revisit our calculator. So if this is our GUI application and you decided to click on these buttons, take note that these buttons doesn't have any functionalities yet because I haven't um, provided any event handling techniques. Not even the close button is working. So this is the product of the video that we created in video number four. So for this current video, we will try to provide meaning or functionality to these buttons and even to the close um, button for our frame. And as I've said, before we do that, Let's define some, some terms like events. Events are the objects that uh, describes what happened. So if I click on a certain button or if I type on a certain value in your text field and then press enter, or even if I move the mouse inside or outside the frame or even press, let's say, Alt F4 if you're using Windows or Command Q if you're using Mac, those are what we call event objects. Event objects is the interaction between the user and your UI, your graphical user interface. So it can be a button click, a mouse pass over, a keyboard shortcut, or even by pressing um, the enter key or choosing uh, an option in your list. So those are uh, interactions that the user does to your interface and the byproduct of that interaction are what we call event objects. All right. So in some components, in some GUI components, there are several UIs or components that you can interact with. These components are what we call event sources. Event sources are GUI components in which the user invoked an interaction. So in this example, I have five buttons, meaning I have five possible event sources. I have a frame, and within this frame, I have a close button that is also a possible event source. If I type on a certain value in any of the text fields, and I press enter or press any of the following buttons, those interaction, the enter key or pressing any of these buttons can also be considered as event sources. So if I click on button add, my event source is called the button add. If I type on a certain value in, let's say, text field number two and press enter, my event source is text field number two. If I click on the clear button, then my event source is the clear button. So event sources are the components that the user triggers if he wants to produce an interaction or what we call an event object. Okay, so events are the byproduct of the interaction by the user to the UI. Event sources are the components where the user triggers the event object or creates the event object, it's the interaction between the user or and the user interface. So if you decided to pass or move the mouse and move it inside or outside the frame, that's 
uh, the event source is your frame. Event handlers, on the other hand, are methods that you write, and these methods are invoked every time that an event is called. So, for example, in your uh, office toolbar, you have your new button, you have your open button, you have your save button, the print button, and all of these buttons are inside what we call uh, a standard toolbar. So, uh, inside the standard toolbar are several buttons that when you click, a certain event will happen. So, if you click on the save button versus clicking on the print button, these are two different buttons that represents two different um, events in your, in your office productivity tool. Now, once you click on these buttons, uh, separate methods will be called. The methods that are being called or invoked, as we would like to phrase it, are called event handlers. So if you click on the save button, a method written on how to save the document will be called. If you click on the print button of a certain office productivity tool, the print method, it's a different type of method, will then be invoked in order for you to print your entire document. So event handlers are simply methods that we write and we would like to describe or set the behavior of our application inside these methods. And these methods are called every time an event object on the proper event source are being executed. Let me show you a sample code. Now, in this example, I have a package, I have a class called test button, which is consists of two components, well, a component and a container. The container's name is F, which is actually a frame, and the component's um, name is B, which is a button. I've instantiated both frames and buttons. And in this method launch frame, I have a method from the button object that is called add action listener. This method is how we register our event handler. All right. So let's try to separate that. So in the last three lines, I've added my button inside my frame. I set the size of the frame. Well, when you say f.pack, the size of the frame will be uh, large enough to accommodate just uh, uh, in the, the components that you place inside. So in this example, I have one button inside the frame. So probably this will be uh, a quite a small frame. And then in the previous uh, video, we said that frames are by default invisible. So we need to set the visibility to true so that we can see the frame that we, were, that we will use. Let's go back on this line. It has B dot add action listener new button handler. Who is new button handler? So let's take a look at the, the other code. In this sample code, I've imported java.awt-event package, which means that I don't have any GUI components or containers in this code. Instead, I only have event handling methods and event handling interfaces. The event handler that I'm using is called button handler, which is of type action listener. So whenever you wanted to type something on your text field, your text area, or if you want to click on a certain button, the proper listener to use is what we call action listener. Let's take a look at the API. So in AWT event, here we go, we have action listener. And if you'll notice, action listener is an interface, which means whenever you invoke or whenever you implement the action listener, you're supposed to override a single method called void action performed, which accepts an action event. Okay, what is an action event? It's an action event, like what we've said, events are interactions between the user and the UI. Action event are invoked whenever you click on a button, you type something on a text field or a text area, and then press enter key. You're creating what we call an action event. That's why 
In this code, in, um, I've created a method, action performed, that will accept an action event. Now, this method is required because, according to the API, we need to override action perform if we are using action listener. So that's what we did. We implemented action listener and we overridden action perform that accepts an action event. Now, this is what you call your event. This is what you call your event handler. Okay? So your event handler is the method event handler. It's a method that we write Okay, and it describes what you're supposed to do every time an event is being triggered. So what we would like to do is just to print a button was clicked. So let's save that. And then, after writing your event handler, the next thing that you need to do is to register that event handler to your component. In this example, the component that we're using is the button. So whenever we trigger the, bo the, the button here, an event handler will be called, which is called button handler. This is the name of the class, button handler. All right? So first, we write our event handler and then we register it. Because without registering that event handler, it's useless. So let's see what how, how this code looks like. Let's try to uh, compile test button. All right? And then run test button so this is our frame that has the class that has a title bar test button then it has the button called click me so if we click here the button was click now this is the byproduct of the system that out that print l and method inside your action performed so whenever you click this you're simply printing a value a text value now the nice thing about this model, this is called delegation model. We have delegated our event handler to another class called button handler. The nice thing about event handling techniques in Java is you can create as many event handlers as you want. Let's try to create another one. Okay, let's uh, call this public class my own, my other event handler. All right, and then let's import java.awt event package and then let's implement the action listener all right let's try to save this first uh, let's call this my other event handler dot java be sure that you're saving it within the same folder as to where your gui and your other event handlers are so let me save it here just to verify, let's see, ls, here we go, my other event handler. So we saved it on the correct location. As we've said earlier, whenever you implement the action listener, we're supposed to override public void action performed, which accepts an action event object. All right. Okay, what would you like us to do here? Let's print another text. I enjoy Java. I enjoy coding in Java. So let's save this. So we're done writing our event handler. So this is our second event handler. Take note that we can create as many event handlers as you want. You can create the third, the fourth, the fifth. But the most important thing after writing your event handler is to register it to your component. So our component is our button. We will say add and then let's go back to our class and the class name is my other event handler. All right, let's and it implements the action listener. So since we're implementing the action listener, let's right click on that and then click on copy. And then let's concatenate it here, paste it here. So you're, you will end up having a method called add action listener. All right. You're adding an action listener 
meaning you're registering an event handler. Now, how do we register the event handler? The name of our class is called my other event handler. So let's right click on that, click on copy, and then we instantiate that object. You say new, and then we paste the name of the class here, followed by a pair of parentheses. So it actually calls our constructor. What we're doing is we're registering the second event handler. Handler. There you go. So what we have now are two event handlers for one component, the button the button object. So save this and then let's try to clear our screen and then compile our code again. Test button dot java compile it again oops my other event handler cannot find symbol have i saved this my other event handler there we go misspelled handler all right handler so save it again um wrong spelling is wrong oops my other event handler. Let's see, let's see. My other event handler. We also have a misspelled here. So let's fix all our spellings. Perfect. All right. So when we run this code, remember that we already we still have a single button, and this button has two registered event handlers. The button handler right here and the other event handler. So if we click this button here, see, there are two events that are being triggered. The first event came from the button handler, while the second event came from my other event handler. So just a closing thought. In... Java, you can create as many event handlers as you want. You can create them on a separate file, or you can even create them within the same file as to where your GUI component is at. In our next set of codes, we will try to create a class that implements multiple event handlers, and all of those components, the GUI and the event handlers, are within the same class. But for this current example that we had right now, We've created two event handlers located in two separate Java source codes. After creating your event handlers, the next important thing that you need to do is to register both event handlers. Forgetting to register them will render your event handler useless. No matter how good your event handlers are, they will, you won't be able to use them because you haven't registered them. So that's about it for this video. I hope to see you in our next video, video number six, in where we will talk about GUI and event handling techniques within the same Java source code. For now, happy coding. See you in our, see you on our on our next video. Good day.